Hey guys, and welcome back to How to Make Elements from Household Materials. And today's element is going to be cobalt. Now, cobalt, interestingly enough, is used in um, lithium-ion batteries. Now, I'm not totally sure where it's used. I tried to do some research, but I couldn't really figure out where it's used in the batteries. But it is definitely used in lithium-ion batteries. Um, typically, there is a lithium electrode in there. Um, and it's pure lithium metal, I believe. But, um... I'm not totally sure, like, I'm really actually quite confused on this, but, um, uh, one of my subscribers, uh, left me a, um, a link to a patent on, um, how to extract cobalt, uh, metal and recover the lithium from these batteries. And, um, it is rather interesting. So it appears that one of the electrodes contains, um, some sort of complex of lithium and cobalt oxide, I believe. Um, and then the other one, electrode, may just be pure lithium. Once again, I'm not totally sure. But, we should be able to take these apart and dunk everything in hydrochloric acid. This is a slightly di a different route than what the, um, uh, patent claimed, because, um, it recovers the lithium also. However, I'm not really interested in the lithium. I'm just mostly interested in the cobalt now. Um, although, I'm sure you could recover the lithium, but the, um, in brand new lithium-ion batteries, the one electrode which contains the lithium metal is, I'm pretty sure it's pretty pure lithium, because when you throw it in water, it fizzes and bubbles um, rapidly, like normal lithium. And then the other electrode must be the lithium cobalt oxide. So, what I'm going to do is separate these, um, and they are totally worn out, like there's no lithium metal in here because they're so old and don't hold a charge anymore. So, we'll separate them. Take all the contents of them, um, except for, of course, the outer casings and stuff, but dunk it in hydrochloric acid. This will form lithium chloride and cobalt chloride, and <coughs> the cobalt um, is much less reactive than aluminum, but lithium is more reactive than aluminum. So I'm thinking by adding an aluminum foil to this solution, the cobalt should precipitate out, and the aluminum should go into solution forming aluminum chloride and cobalt metal. However, the lithium chloride, which is more reactive than the aluminum, should stay in solution and not displace uh, um, with the aluminum. And that's my idea on how to get the cobalt, which we can then melt down into a bead or something. Anyhow, so I'll write up the reaction on what's going to happen, and then I'll start taking these apart. Okay, so after uh, peeling back the outer casing, which is right here, with uh, some various pliers, which I've just put down a little bit right there, um, you can see we're left with a cylinder. Now it is important to wear gloves because typically the electrolyte is potassium hydroxide which is very corrosive. But uh, the next thing to try to do is to uh, peel back this, which it can be fairly difficult to do. Uh, but if you can get the whole thing peeled back, then there's going to be some various components inside. So uh, I'm having a hard time doing this, so I'll peel it back um, and then I'll meet you back as soon as I've undone the whole roll. Okay, so you can see it unrolls into something similar to this. Now, um, if we take a look at this, it's actually several different layers, and we can actually separate them. And um, so any of the metallic things, such as this, um, as long as there's no um, no uh, plastic on it, we can put it in our beaker. Now, I happen to know that there is copper in between these two outer layers, but copper won't be attacked by hydrochloric acid, so that's totally fine. So we'll just be left with some nice copper foil after. So that can be added... And you can see there's a plastic layer here, and so we can simply separate this off and um, also add this uh, piece in. And you can see that uh, there's a nice metallic something, but that isn't lithium metal, so that can also be added. I'm not totally sure what metal it is. I'm kind of confused on how these batteries totally work, but um, anyhow. So I'll meet you back as soon as I've processed a couple more of these batteries. Okay, so after going through two or three batteries, um, you can go through as many as you want. But we can now add some hydrochloric acid. This is just uh, muriatic acid, which you can buy at Home Depot. It's the same thing as hydrochloric acid. So we'll add enough to fully top everything up. And you can see there's a reaction and bubbling occurring. So, to not inhale the fumes, but now we should be generating the um, reaction, which is shown right here below. So... It is important that I forgot to tell you, but um, you can uh, get these old spent lithium ion batteries from your local uh, landfill or dump or whatever. Um, they should have a separate place to recycle batteries, and if you can find dead lithium ion batteries, it's the perfect source. Alternatively, you could save your own. Anyhow, so you can now see that we have a vigorous reaction occurring, and everything's being dissolved, except for, of course, hopefully, the copper foil. So uh, we'll just let this finish up. So this nice green color does indicate that we have uh, 
cobalt in solution, as cobalt chloride typically forms blue solutions. Um, and it may just be green because of other metals which have also dissolved into solutions, such as lithium or something. Um, but a color change such as this does clearly indicate that hopefully we have a cobalt in solution. So you can see that uh, the reaction below was just what we did. Lithium cobalt oxide plus 2 hydrochloric acid, or 2 HCl, gives um, lithium chloride, cobalt chloride, and water. So, um, it really, really, like, it really seems like there's a lot of chlorine gas coming off. Not, maybe hydrogen chloride, but it's it smells a lot more like chlorine gas, so I'm not totally sure why. But, um, anyhow, it doesn't really matter because... It's just a bit, but it ugh, yeah. makes taste really bad. I can taste it in the air. Anyhow, we'll let the reaction um, finish up, and then we'll go inside with this. Actually, we'll probably keep it outside. Um, and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, so once the reaction's died down and there's uh, barely any more bubbling, we can now go ahead and scoop out all of the um, unreactive stuff, which is mainly going to be copper metal, and put it in a bag, which I've put over to the side there. And, um... You can see the blue color of the solution now. It's very, very blue. This means that there's definitely cobalt. And you can see this is just copper foil, which never reacted. So we're going to scoop out all the unreacted stuff, put it in there, and then filter it off. So I'll meet you back when that's been done. So um, as I'm filtering, I just wanted to see if you could see the intense blue color. Like, this is a very blue solution. There's no longer any green color as before. It's very, very blue. This indicates huge amounts of cobalt in solution, which is a very good sign. So uh, hopefully we have lots of cobalt chloride, and hopefully we can get lots of cobalt. So let uh, finish filtering off everything, and then I'll meet you back. Okay, so I filtered everything off, and it is a very, very, very dark blue color. As you can clearly see, you can see right there, it's very blue. But um, interestingly enough, um, this is uh, when cobalt is hydrated, it becomes purple. So I have, just have a test tube of water here, and we'll add some of this uh, cobalt chloride to it and notice the color change so I'll just put that down there and you can see that it's now become a light purple pink color and upon adding more it should just get um, more prominent but um, this is just because we're hydrating the cobalt chloride and um, hydrated cobalt chloride is more of a purple color which is clearly shown here so you can see that it's a very nice pinky purple color um, anyhow so I'll put that over there so to reduce this, we should just need um, aluminum powder, or not, uh, sorry, aluminum foil to reduce it. But um, if for some reason it doesn't work, I don't want to waste all of it. So to this small little beaker here, I'll just pour off a little bit of our solution as a test. So it's still highly acidic, so the aluminum foil will react with the acid, forming aluminum chloride, and also do hopefully do a displacement with the um, cobalt chloride, chloride, forming aluminum chloride also. So should get a vigorous reaction. Yep, I can see a vigorous reaction. We'll just see if anything precipitates out. If nothing precipitates out, then we'll know that this doesn't work. But um, it does appear that on that aluminum foil, it is turning quite black, hopefully with cobalt precipitant. So um, I think this is definitely going to work. So I'll meet you back when I've reacted quite a bit of aluminum foil with this until no more fizzing occurs. Okay, so I went ahead and poured all the solution in there, and I'm just reacting it all with the aluminum foil in the bigger solution because I'm pretty sure it works. And as you can see, small pieces of uh, cobalt powder uh, were left on the sides of this beaker. So we definitely made cobalt metal, which is very interesting. So we just need to carry out this reaction, as I said before, until no more fizzing occurs. And at that point, we can then melt all our cobalt down into a nice little bead after filtering it off. So I'll go ahead and react all of this with lots of aluminum foil. Okay, so I'm back inside now, and you can see that after precipitating out all that cobalt metal with the aluminum powder, we simply filtered it off and dried it out. I then transferred it to this test tube to uh, crush it up. Now, I'm not totally sure whether or not this is cobalt uh, metal, because it's in an extremely fine state because we precipitated a solution. And um, this means that it does not actually look metallic, instead it just looks black. Now, the camera's not picking it up super well, but there is a slight brown color to it. I, I'm not totally sure if there is or not, but it almost looks slightly brown, which makes me think that this could perhaps be the, uh, one of the forms of cobalt oxide or multiple forms, because cobalt oxide comes in colors um, depending on the type of oxide, such as green, black, and red. Um, because there are several different oxidation states of cobalt, which means it forms uh, multiple different oxides. So, if this was a mixture of the oxides, it would give a 
color that could be like this, but it also could just be the very finely um, powdered metal. So the only real way to test this is to heat this up to extremely high temperatures. However, um, before we do that, I just wanted to show you that I'm not totally sure whether or not the cobalt oxide or any of the oxides are actually magnetic, but this is clearly magnetic as this magnet can stick to it and drag the metal along with it. So, I'm very sure that this is definitely a cobalt compound as it is magnetic. However, we will have to um, heat this up in uh, my arc furnace because it has such a high melting point of over 1,600 degrees Celsius. So if we go ahead, take this outside, set up my arc furnace, and uh, put this on there and melt some of it. If we get a nice shiny bead of cobalt metal, then we'll know we made cobalt. If not, this is most likely the oxide, and I do have um, another process planned on how to get this out, which I will try if that does not work. So, I'll go ahead, set up my arc furnace outside, and we'll melt down some of this and see if we get any cobalt metal. Okay, so I just set up my arc furnace, and you can see right there we have the uh, test tube of our cobalt compound. I'm not sure if it's actually the powdered metal or if it's the oxide. But um, nonetheless, we'll be melting it. Now, upon adding huge amounts of heat, such as from an arc furnace, um, although you just need about a thousand degrees Celsius, um, if this is cobalt oxide, all the oxides of cobalt will um, convert to the cobalt 2 oxide, CO. This is um, necessary because if we are to reduce this with aluminum later on um, to get our cobalt metal, it should be uh, cobalt oxide, uh, well, cobalt 1 ox, or cobalt 2 oxide, sorry, um, and not the other oxides, as cobalt 2 oxide is the most efficient to reduce to the cobalt metal, and will leave us with as few byproducts as possible. But if this is, of course, cobalt metal, then it'll just melt into a nice bead. So I'll pour out a little bit of this, and then melt it, and see what we get. Hopefully we get a little bead of cobalt, and if not, then it'll be cobalt oxide. So we'll determine it this way. So, I'll meet you back as soon as I've started this. Okay, here we go. Okay, so that preliminary test was definitely a success. I mean, look at this. You can see that this little bead of cobalt metal is very clearly attracted to this magnet very strongly. So this is clearly cobalt metal. And uh, there were a few other beads, but they were really tiny, so I just kind of ignored them. But we definitely got cobalt metal. So we'll go ahead, take the rest of that um, powder over there, and melt it down. Now, of course, don't melt it down if you're going to be using it as a catalyst in a reaction or something. And, of course, leave it as a powder. And I may save some of it as a powder just because um, it is so useful in various different um, reactions. But um, I'm definitely going to melt a bit more of this down so I can get a better element sample. And I may melt all of it down and just make more powdered cobalt in the future. So I'll put the rest on, melt it down, and yeah. Oi, right, here we go. Okay, so as you can see, we were left with um, less than a gram, but almost a gram, of uh, nice cobalt metal ingots, which are very attractive to this magnet. So, um, that was clearly cobalt powder that we had there, and not the oxide as I had first assumed. So, that is essentially how to extract the cobalt me uh, metal from uh, lithium-ion batteries, and we got uh, just under a gram from about uh, two batteries. So, uh, not an amazing amount of cobalt, but definitely plausible to uh, get cobalt from there. And that powder could be used in several different um, synthesis, um, syntheses, I guess. Anyhow, so I'll go ahead and put this in an ampule and put it in my element collection. So, that's basically how to make cobalt metal. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Wait, bye. As a final note, it is important to note that cobalt chloride can be carcinogenic. I um, mean, it has been found to be carcinogenic um, um, and cause cancer. So, it's very dangerous. We must be careful with cobalt chloride. So, that waste solution that we have must be dealt with properly. Um, it was a nice deep purple after, which means there's probably still definitely some cobalt chloride in it that I couldn't get to precipitate out. Anything that is um, contaminated with the cobalt, cobalt um, compounds must be disposed of 
and rinsed and cleaned properly and have that water disposed of and not dumped down the drain as it could seriously harm various creatures. Anyhow, okay, bye.